All right, so what I, what I have here is an interesting problem. I'm trying to set up this thing, which is a uh, Grand Stream analog telephone adapter, and I'm trying to get it uh, set up properly, um, which has a web page that lets you to do lets you do that. But unfortunately, the box hasn't hasn't assigned itself an IP address, so I need to assign it one. Now, without using the web page to do so, that gets tricky. You can configure it uh, using a telephone, using commands entered into a telephone, but I don't have a regular analog telephone. I have a rotary one, but you can't use a rotary one for that. So, instead, I have a power book from 2001 running an ancient version of OS X and it's got a modem which is the closest thing I have to an analog phone so I'm connected to the modem via a serial port and I'm using dialing commands to access the menu star 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 opens the menu and then I'm picking the option so I'm about to set the IP address just tells it to dial star 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 pause zero two to access the option pause and then the IP address. Let's see. Okay, that should be set. So let's do another command, ATD star star star, comma, 01 to check. Okay, that's correct. That was not, that did not echo the IP address like I thought it would. ATD star star go to. Hmm. That's not loading the way I thought it would, so we're going to take another look at this and see what went wrong. Alright, we're going to make sure that the web port is open. As I readdress the manual, and that may have been the problem. So we're going to check the status with Command 12. Enter the new option. Web, web access, enable. That's what I thought. So that's not the problem. Alright, part three. So, thus far I've been unable to get it to work. Um, part of the problem is the manual is assuming I have a default configuration, which I don't. This is already set up, so I've decided to restore everything to the default settings and start from scratch. Now, I could uh, stick a pen in the reset hole, hold it down for X number of seconds, and restart it that way. But since we're already knee-deep in this very bizarre method of setting up our system, uh, I'm going to send the reset command via the IVR, which is 99. And then this. What is this? Well, in order to instruct it to do a factory reset, uh, from the IVR, it requires the MAC address of the device. But you might notice that the MAC address has a B in it. Well, according to the manual, it has a guide for transcribing all of the letters that are supposed to be in the MAC address, and for whatever reason, this B becomes three twos. Fortunately, there are no other letters. The rest correspond to the numbers. We're going to see if this works. We have mixed feelings about it. Okay, reverting. Well, it looks like it's doing it. 
So the part of the problem I was having was that you have the WAN and LAN ports. Now, uh, this actually is designed to offer network address translation, though I don't need it. Uh, it does by default, but I had had it configured to where the, the LAN port was just a pass-through. There was no network address translation. But that uh, means that the default web page for configuring it uh, doesn't work, at least not in a manner that's straightforward. So uh, we're going to... Let's back up and see if we can't get to it. Network address, network address translation should be re-enabled, so I'm going to make sure, first of all, that we've got a new IP address. I don't want the internal modem, if dingus, Ethernet. 2.100, that sounds right to me, okay. So, 2.1. Great success, alright, I'm here. Now I need to enter the default password, but I'm going to end the video here because I have to use my phone to look up the password. But, uh, so that's how we reset that. Um, that was probably one of the more bizarre things I've done with something like this.